Next we come to our account settings. We can find these by clicking on this button here. Here we can view things such as our subscription and our users, as well as create templates and upload custom fonts. Next we come to users. Here we can add, edit and delete users, as well as create user roles and user groups. Our account can have an unlimited number of users. To create a new one, click new user. Here is where we create our new user. We are quickly going to add a designer for our account. We can then assign a role and a user group, which we'll come to in a second, and then select which notifications they will receive. Once we're happy, click Create User. As you can see, our new user has been created. They have a role of admin, which means they have full access to our account. We can use user roles to only give certain users limited access to our account. For example, as a designer, we mainly want them to upload, view and delete media items, as well as add, build and preview layouts. So let's create that role. Click new role. Apply a role name and then we select our permissions. So media, they can upload, view and delete. And layouts, they can view, add and edit. Once we're happy, click create role. To assign this role to a user, we have to go back to our users. Edit our user. and assign a role. Once we're done, click update user. As we can see, the designer's role is now design team. If we now log out of our admin account and into our designer account, we will see our user role in action. As we can see on the left hand side, we only have a media option and layouts. Everything else we can't affect as our user role doesn't allow us. If we go into media, we will still see the media that's been uploaded before, as well as the layouts. As you can see in the layouts, we can't delete layouts as we didn't assign this to the user role. User groups and tagging allow us to segment the account even further. At the minute, our design team has limited access to the media and the layout section. We could then add tags and assign a user group to the design team for them to only see specific items in those sections that have been tagged. So let's set this up. So first we have to create our group. Here we give our group a name and then assign all the users we want to this group. We then have to edit our group permissions. So the first option is whether we want to show or hide all of the items that have been tagged. For this example we want to show our items. The next option is whether we show all items with any of the following tags or all of the following tags. So for instance if we had two tags, one design and one marketing, 
if we selected with any of the following tags, any item that has been tagged design or marketing or both would show. If we selected with all of the following tags, any item that was tagged just design or just marketing wouldn't show. The item would have to be tagged with both. So for this example, we're going to select with any of the following tags. You can set an upload limit on the amount of media this group can upload to the account. We can then give each user permission to tag their own items with another group's tag, giving that group access to their items. Once we're happy, click Update User. To show this has worked, I'm quickly going to go through our account and tag some items. So first, we go into our layouts. I'm going to tag our layout example. Then go into our media. Tag one item with design. and one item marketing. We then need to log in to our designer account. Same as before, we only have two sections, a media and a layout section. This time, if we go into media, we will only see the two items that have been tagged. If we then go into layouts, we will only see the one layout that has been tagged. The next option is templates. As I mentioned before, any layout that we create can be saved as a template. To do this, we click add new. Give our template a name and choose the layout that we want to create a template of. Once we're done, we click Create Template. If we then go into our layout section and add new. we will see that a template has been created. Next we come to fonts. Here we can upload custom fonts that we want to use in our builder. We can simply drag and drop or press the upload button to browse our computer. We have to make sure the file is either a TTF or an OTF file. Once this has been uploaded, we can then use this in our builder. Finally, we come to the default settings. In here, we can change the default settings on anything in our account. From the default volume on our videos and audio, to the default font in our builder and template in our layout. Once we're happy, we click Save Settings.